Welcome to another Lumion live stream tutorial guys. This is Chris Welton from C Welton Design. In this topic, I'm going to cover how to import animated objects from 3ds Max into Lumion. Alright guys, this is a topic that I probably should have covered a long time ago. It got me so super excited. When I first uh, started playing with it and saw someone doing it online, but I'm going to cover a very, very basic method of how I get animated objects into Lumion. Explain the limitations, what you can bring in, and even show, you know, maybe two examples of how we can get these into Lumion. So, the biggest example I've always used before is cars. Lumion just recently added some, uh, some decent, more decent cars. Their ones were getting a little old for me. And I always wanted to, and I had several car models, and I always wanted to bring in my own. The problem is you can't animate them because there it looks bad if you're animating something, a car that's moving with its wheels stuck. So uh, one of the first things I learned how to do is animate wheels. I will show you how to do that. You know, I have a oh, uh, the there's an error with that. There's the kit, the brake caliper is moving with it, but you can see we got wheels moving. So if you, I'm sure you guys have seen when you go to import an object, it says import animations. Some people probably got confused. I used to think that might have to do with SketchUp's animations or the path and everything. It's not. It has to do with these type of animations. And so now I can animate this car with move. If I had a scene where I want this driving. Obviously there's no drivers. I could add a driver easily. Uh, probably a different topic. But I could easily add a driver in 3ds Max, stick it in there. Now when we go to the move effects. And these are animated specifically slowly. It, not, not, not quite right, it needs to move a little more. <laughs> Kind of. That's the idea. So, I'm going to show you guys how to do that, at least. And maybe a couple other simple things. So, I'll be honest, I am no... Ooh. I am no 3ds Max expert. I've used it plenty, but I... I... <laughs> I know how to basically get what I need out of it, and then jump out of it as soon as I can. And so, if you... Get, now, I know there's plenty of other softwares out there that could animate, potentially. I have not tested any one of them. Everything I learned was using 3ds Max. You know, there's other animation softwares like Maya or Blender, and I'm assuming it works similar. I'll lay out the, the ground rules of what the form has, or Lumion has said. Settings need to come into Lumion. Um, so essentially, if you know how to do animations and the other softwares, it might work as well. But for you guys that are just SketchUp Revit users who don't really use Max at all or aren't that comfortable with it, I'm going to try to base it around you guys and make it so you guys can actually jump into this and get something working. Now I'm going to start off just doing explain the basic animations and how that kind of work in 3ds Max. Not going. This is such an extremely detailed subject. I'm going to just cover the real basics of this. So I'm just creating a box here. And we're going to animate this box. Okay, so we have our box here, and if you guys haven't noticed, there's a timeline at the bottom here. It's set at max as default, it's 100 frames. I understand that's frames, and how long that is all depends on the frame rate. It's probably set to 30 frames a second, and I'm not gonna do the math. Uh, you know, whatever, 100. That's where you guys get the idea. So it's like 3.3 seconds of animation. You can just play it right here. That's how long it is. So we're gonna wanna adjust that in general. So, where we go in 3ds Max, down by this timeline, it's kinda hidden along all these little icons. We're going to this time configuration, little clock with a gear. This is where we're gonna set things up, and the first thing we need to do is set it to PAL, which it's not showing it here, it's changed it to 25 frames a second. So, I already can go to custom, so you guys can see it. So, Lumia needs to import 25 frames per second um, when you export it. 
and it doesn't matter. It can. I've seen it do insane lengths of animation. I'm just gonna go ahead and set this to uh, 10 seconds of animation, so 250 frames. So now this has changed to 250 frames here, and we're set at 25 frames a second. So that's just what Lumion it switched to PAL. So that's what Lumion's forum mentions. That's what they officially support. I have had other ones come in. I don't quite explain it. It's been inconsistent. Um, there's times when this will work, and sometimes it's frustrating. Something's not working. But I've gotten pretty good at it just by following what they say. So how to animate in 30s max now i'm going to talk to you guys as if you're lumion users and you guys have used say advanced move you guys are used to keyframe animation where you're adding a frame here click and then we move here down the timeline frame here click that's really how this works so we have our our box here it's going to start right here and there's two methods of setting keyframes Auto key is really easy because anytime you move it, it's going to create a keyframe. So create a keyframe there. We go down to a little later here. And obviously you'd want this to loop and end up right where it was. We're not going to do that in this case. But I can just see there's the animation. Nothing, nothing crazy. This is pretty simple. I mean, 3S Max is kind of scary sometimes. It used to freak me out. It's, it's this is actually pretty this is the simple stuff and then you could always move these frames around if you wanted you could even I'm probably going a little more advanced but you could even like move them all there was a way to reverse it someone showed me once but so there's that you know we can go in and we could actually decide you know what this frame I wanted to jump up to and it's set set it's an auto key so it's automatically updated. So there's the animation. You know what? We're going to import that right now. The problem is it doesn't loop. I can make it loop though. Let's do and delete that free keyframe. I just selected it, hit delete. Simple enough. Uh, so there's probably better ways. Again, I'm not an expert. I'm going to delete what we did. And I'm going to do kind of how we do it in Lumion. So there's an auto key it's set up as a first frame. I want it to end on that same exact frame. So here's a four set key because we didn't actually move it. That's something Lumion could use. But set key is also really nice if you're really trying to be precise. I'll, I'll do it with set key this time. This time you have to manually choose when you edit when you add the key. So I'm going to have this go here. Set key. Then I can go here. It, it's automatically wanted because I added this key from here. It wants to go back. So set set another key, and then I'll make it go over here. And now, now this will play in a loop because it starts and ends in the same location. Not exactly exciting. You're getting the idea. So in order to export this, don't worry, we'll do a better one after this. Export. We want to do, no, we have two choices. We could do either do FBX or .dae Colada. Um, both work. I just always seem to go with FBX. Box. Animate. So the only thing you really need to make sure is checked is make sure animation is checked. Don't really worry about too much of all of this stuff. Hit OK. And let's go into Lumion and import new model box animate. So when you go to open, make sure import animation is checked. Put whatever category you want here. You just keep it in default. And when you come in, it should just start animating. Just like that. So as we're doing this, one thing that's kind of weird is that. That's where it started, and that's where you're gonna grab it, no matter where it is. It's kind of like the birds. You remember, you know, the seagulls. They're always hard to find because <laughs> they're flying around everywhere. This is how this is. It, 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 from frame zero, the starting frame. That's how you kind of select it, and we do materials. It's kind of weird. You know, I want to make this a mud box. 
So that's how you add materials. And it'll start animated again. So there it is. That's the basics. So let's do something a little more interesting. Let's go back into 3ds Max. Let's go. We'll keep it in there. Why not? So I'm just gonna delete this object. I'm on circle slide. Um, let's try something else again. All right, so our settings are still dialed in from before at 25 frames a second. This is about 10 seconds. We could always adjust that longer or shorter. Um, it's actually really good to, well, depending on what you're animating, if you're trying to animate something very specific, like a car driving in and parking or something, you want to leave a bunch of dead frames so it doesn't just instantly start looping. So you could add like 30 seconds on top of your 10 second animation. So it'll sit there in the last frame, you have to worry about it looping back. If you want it looping, as in like it, it ends in the same position, like say our wheels, where it's like a continuous smooth animation, then it doesn't really matter. You want it to end and start in the same, the same position. So I'm gonna explain the limitations of the animations into Lumion. So what we're doing are, I don't know that they're really called, but they're kind of, they're basic animations. Lumion supports move, scale, and rotate animations. That's it. Um, and what it does not support is something called, they, they call vertex animations or deformation animations. Anytime a mesh or an object, the actual geometry is changed, and this happens in specifically character animations when they move an arm and you know part of it stretches that type of animation is not supported so before you get super excited and want to add some axyz animated characters of your own you, that's not how you, it doesn't work that way it doesn't quite work in lumion so there's these crazy methods that people are doing to get it in there i'm not gonna get into that and go in the forums, you'll find some crazy things people are doing to, to cheat it, but it's not really worth it. But for real basic stuff, it's fine. And honestly, that's what I already need, needed to use this for. There's so many cool animation scripts you can use in Max to help kind of import into there. And, or you're just trying to anim animate a wheel. So I'm just going to show one, one last, one other quick one. Sometimes this happens in Max. I'm not sure what I did. Let's just start again. <laughs> I'm not a huge fan of 3ds Max. It does a lot of stuff when I don't want it to, and I'm not sure what just happened. So remember, we want this to loop, so I'm going to set a keyframe here. Uh, I must have... Let's set it back to auto key. My inexperience is showing here. No worries, we got this. Keyframe. Keyframe. So what we're going to do is we're going to start this here and then I'm going to do different types of, anim of support animations. And if you're doing rotations, we'll talk about this when we do the wheel, but you can always turn on snaps here. That really helps. So there's that to get a rotate. And then it's going to scale down. It's on, this is on auto key to scale up. Rotate another direction and back. So playing through our animation there. Beautiful. So again, why don't I just bring that in? Never really original with my testing. You can bring that in here. It's my naming and animation is selected. And again, so those are the, the extensive types of animations you can do. Granted, there's a lot of stuff you can do with that. Remember that. So now let's jump into animating a car. Okay, so I have a SketchUp model here. This is to kind of showcase what you need to have set up before we bring into 3ds Max. 
The biggest thing is you need to have the wheel as its own group, all the parts that are actually going to move, and then it's going to orbit or rotate along the center. So this 3ds Max will pick up that object, that group, and let us animate it. That's about it. All of these ones are all set up. We don't want the calipers rotating. That's, that's, that wouldn't be correct. All right, so we're going to go and save. As version 8. That's the name of it. Stick it on this desktop. Alright, make sure it's version 8. That'll import the best. And 3S Max open here. Let's go ahead and create a new scene. We'll go through this again. Do all. Alright. So we're going to bring in this Ferrari. Whatever car you want, whatever thing with wheels, it works. All right, so let's kind of get it centered on there. Came in with these cameras and lighting thing. Don't worry about that. All right. So what we need to do is, because it's grabbed that wheel, only the wheel, which is perfect. But what we don't want is to rotate it like this because that's not how wheels rotate. Um, there's a complicated way of doing it. It's not that complicated. But the best way we're going to do this, we're just going to go, to go, go up to here, group, and make a group. Now it'll wheel, it'll rotate along its wheels, the center, like a real wheels do. Go ahead and group that one again. And if you wanted to, we could group two of them at once. Let's try that actually. We'll group these groups. I think this is what I used to do. It's been a little bit. Okay, so now there's a centerpiece and it rotates both wheels. You can't get all four. It's not the way I can remember. So let's look at our settings here down at the clock. Make sure we're set to 25. Looks like it retained that. 25. And we actually do only want 25 frames because we're just going to make this rotate once in a second and a loop. So I'll make sure we have snaps turned on so we get the right angles because we're going to be rotating these 360. So let's go ahead and do the auto key. This is going to be really simple. So keyframe here. And then we will rotate. Let's make it go faster. We'll do 720. It'll rotate twice in a second. Set key. And now it's doing a burnout. Excellent. Perfect. All right, stop that. We'll do this one. Set key. And then obviously we want them to rotate the same. There you can imagine lots of cool things you could really do if you want on, wanted to. And play. Here's our wheels turning. So let's go ahead and export this. The FBX. There we go. Make sure animation is checked. And let's see this come into Lumion. With all other special objects we have here. Uh Ferrari super fast. Import animation is checked. Oh, our scale is. <laughs> Just gotta be careful with these guys on um, somewhere around there. That's still a little big. But as you can see, the wheels are rotating. I don't know how big this one is. There they are. We got an animated car in here. Paint job. Needs to be red. Come on. So obviously it's paused since it's a. Uh, Since we're in edit mode here, 
That's not really good tire material or model. Yeah, I'll just do this. Oh, there's not an interior in there. Anyways. And. There we go. It's animated. Just like this one. Same method I did to do that one. Let's move a little faster. Alright guys, well I hope that, you know, if you haven't opened 3S Max before or you're really uncomfortable with it, hopefully I've made it so you can at least do the basics on here and you've learned, you'll be able to learn how to kind of do basic animations in there, maybe give, give you guys some cool ideas and you can get some rotating wheels in Lumion. Um, thanks for watching, um, please leave any questions in the comments, I'll see if I can help you guys out. And uh, thanks for watching, please subscribe guys. And give me some more ideas of other tutorials you'd like to see. Until next time, thanks guys.